Hello, this is Mr. Muller for section 11-4, Linear, Quadratic, and Exponential Models. All right, so for this one, we have to compare linear, quadratic, and exponential models and basically say which one is which. Okay, so remember, linear is going to have that straight line there. Quadratic is going to have those uh, patterns. And then exponential is going to be raised by those exponents of those, multiply, those multiplying patterns. So if I have something like this, um, kind of showing the linear model there, so it's going to be a straight line. Something like this is going to be quadratic, so not really having um, a pattern there, more of that, that U shape with the X squared kind of pattern. And then we'll have something like this, which is exponential, which is what we just did in section three with that kind of that L shape where we're going to be ducking down. Okay. And remember, if we look back at these numbers, there's going to be a pattern here. So if we have a constant rate with these linears, so it looks like each of these is going down about 8.5 each time. So there's my constant rate. Um, when it's quadratic, usually there's going to be a rate of a square pattern. Um, usually hard to see with numbers, so probably graphing would probably be one of the better ways to see this. And remember, exponential is going to be a multiplying pattern. Um, so multiplying by a half, multiplying by a half, multiplying by a half. So one like this, hopefully we could see, especially when we are see the graph, we know that this is going to be an exponential kind of pattern here. Um, so bacteria population is going to be something that would probably be best exponentially because of how it grows. Um, this one reams of paper, so it's probably going to be something that's best linear. Um, you know, we can kind of plot where, how many boxes it's going to be for reams of paper. It's going to be a linear function. Here's another one that's exponential. Um, so once we graph things like this, it looks like we're growing, um, multiplying by about 1.5 every time. Um, so kind of getting there until we, um, get to three for every three three point eight and kind of that that l shape that we're looking for for exponential functions here's one that's going to be quadratic um, you'll see kind of the pattern with the negative um, and positive numbers here uh, so something like this where it's positive three is negative 14 and negative three is negative 14 because once we square them we're still going to get those positive and negative numbers that'll be the same when we're looking at it and we don't happen to see the graph, you could always graph it, but if we're looking at a table like this, so this one's going to be quadratic because the second difference is going to be the same. So we're looking at the first difference here, 64, 32, 0 to negative 32. That second difference is negative 32 for all those. So then we know it's quadratic. Here we know this one's exponential because we are multiplying by 1.17 every single time. And this one's going to be quadratic again. We are adding 6 every second time. The second difference you'll see there is adding 6. Um, and this is kind of what they look like if we see it as, a, as an equation. So remember linear, really just looking at the x's here to see what the difference is. Um, linear is just going to have a number in front of the x. Quadratic uh, is going to have an x squared. And exponential, the, that x is going to be an exponent. That's why it's called exponential. So linear with that straight line, quadratic with that U or N shape, exponential with those L's kind of curving shapes. Um, so if we remember those, and hopefully once we either see the graph or see a table, we can kind of see the pattern. Um, sometimes we will have to write what the pattern is. So writing them in function notation, kind of like what you did last year in chapter four, um, writing out what they would look like. So what the pattern is. So here we're talking about um, uh, email forwarding and versus in time. So in zero days, number of people who received an email was eight. One day, 56. Two days, 392. Uh, three days, 2,744. So what is going on from every X to every Y? What's the formula there? So we need to understand what the problem is and determine if it's going to be quadratic, 
linear or exponential. And we should be able to figure out that this one, it looks like they're going to be multiplying by 7 every day. So it's kind of one of those problems where, you know, if everybody, um, you know, shared that email with 7 people, and then everybody that, that got that email again shared that email with 7 people, and everyone who got that email shared that email with 7 people, how it would grow, and it would, that would grow exponentially. So we kind of see the pattern is times thing by 7. So when we're trying to write the equation for it, we know 7 is going to be that change there. And then we can pick any ordered pair from that table and plug it in for x and y. If we happen to plug it in for x and y, we will find out that it's going to equal 8. So it doesn't matter what you do. If you plug in any number here, 0, 8, 156, 2, 392, 3, 2, 7, 2,744, it's all going to be the same answer with uh, that a equals 8. And then once we kind of figure out that my equation is going to be, um, you know, a is our 8, 7 is our pattern, and we want to know after one week, so the time is 7 days. So if everybody that got the email shared it with, or shared it 7 times, by the end of that week when it starts, we would have about 6.5 million emails shared um, using the exponential growth formula. Um, and this is what I was talking about. No matter what, if you picked uh, 0 and 8, this time it was 1 and 56, this time it was 2 and 392, this time it was 3 and 2744, no matter what, you're still going to get the same answer. So you can't really say it's going to be different if somebody picks a different X and Y. As long as you're picking an X and Y from that table, you will get the same answer.